if you were an Italian grandmother, well, you might spend your weekend making a big pot of Sunday gravy, or maybe even a long simmered ragu. But Ashley, luckily, has found a much faster way to make a great sausage ragu, and it doesn't sacrifice flavor. That's right. If you were to taste it, you would think that it cooked all day long. All so. right. All right, and the secret is to develop flavor at every single stage of the recipe. First, I'm gonna start with one half of a fennel bowl that's been chopped coarse. And we have one half of an onion that's been chopped coarse as well. And one tablespoon of fennel seeds. So you can see that we've added both fennel and fennel seeds, and that's just to bring out the overall sausage flavor, because as you know, there's a lot of fennel in sausage. That's right, Italian sausage, I think of fennel. Yep. I'm gonna start by pulsing this for 10 pulses. I'm gonna wipe down the sides of the bowl here just to make sure everybody gets a fair shot with that blade. Just transfer this to the bowl. I love fresh fennel. It's so underused. Mm -hmm. But fennel and onion together at the start of almost any sauce is it's pretty darn good. Great combination. And now we have our whole peeled tomatoes. Now we tested this with crushed tomatoes, but honestly it varied brand to brand and it was pretty inconsistent. So we decided to go with whole peeled tomatoes. So we're gonna process this for about one minute. It's been about one minute and that looks great. Texture's nice and smooth here. I'm just gonna transfer this to the bowl. I'm gonna process now two pounds of sweet Italian sausage. Now these do come in the links, but it's pretty easy to remove the meat from the links. You just slice down a little line down the link and take out the meat. Okay. Yeah, so I'm gonna transfer this to the empty food processor here. I love it, so you don't have to clean out the food processor, just let it go with yep. the tomato and a little bits of onion in there. And these are gonna process for 10 seconds. This looks great. I'm just gonna heat up some oil real quick until shimmering over medium-high heat. I have one tablespoon extra virgin olive oil. The oil is now shimmering. So let's start this by putting the sausage right in. There's that sizzle I wanna hear. Just put the sausage into an even layer. And this is gonna cook for about 10 to 15 minutes until the liquid has evaporated and the meat begins to sizzle. The liquid has evaporated, and as you can see, we're starting to get some nice brown bits at the bottom of the pot. Now to the pot, we are gonna add the processed vegetables, thanks to the help of that food processor earlier. And we have a half a teaspoon salt, and that's not only gonna help to season things at this stage, but it's also gonna help to soften the aromatics, the vegetables, as they're all breaking down right now. Mm. So I'm gonna let this go for about five minutes. Look at the browning at the bottom of the pot. This is going to be good. Now we are going to add some tomato paste. So All we right. have two tablespoons of tomato paste. We have four cloves of minced fresh garlic and one and a half teaspoons of dried oregano. Stir this together until well coated and cook until fragrant, which will take about 30 seconds. Bam, Ooh, there it is. Oh, all righty. <laughs> Here we have three quarters of a cup of dry red wine, and I'm gonna pour this into the pot. We're gonna hear a nice sizzle, but that's a good thing. We're gonna cook it down for about one minute. We wanna scrape the brown bits off at this point. And incorporate it into the other ingredients. Exactly. Oh yeah, that's a good sound. It's almost an automatic release. And it's a really good tip for if you have a dirty pan or something, acid, red wine, white wine, always helps to collect all the brown bits off of your saucepan or your pot. All right, it's been about one minute, and as you can see, that red wine has cooked down. So right now I'm gonna add the processed tomatoes from earlier. All right. And you'll see I have some water over there. I have one cup of water, thank you very much, that I'm gonna add in here as well. And this just helped to give a silkier texture to the sauce, and make it a little bit thinner so that even though we are only cooking this for 45 minutes, it really helps the texture of the sauce, it's not gonna get too thick, it's not gonna burn at the bottom of the pan, so it really helps things a lot. And it looks like we are at a simmer now, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna reduce it down to low heat and cook this for 45 long minutes. No lid. No lid. We are getting closer, I promise. We've got the sauce simmering away, but as you can see, we have four quarts of water that I brought up to a boil. And I'm just gonna start by seasoning it with one tablespoon of salt. Give it a nice stir here. 
And here we have one pound of pasta. Now this is parpadel pasta. It's a long, wide, flat noodle. You could also use tagliatelle if that's also available at your grocery store. Mm -hmm. But we prefer the long, wide, flat noodles for this type of dish because it's a ragu. You want something to catch that sausage if it falls to the bottom of your bowl. In the water. Give it a little stir just to wake everybody up in here. And I'm just going to cook it until al dente. And that's the right ratio. Four quarts of water to one pound of pasta and a tablespoon of salt. Yeah. All right, let's check for doneness here. And how do you do that? You just slap it against a wall? Well, you could. <laughs> I'm just going to do the old-fashioned taste test. Interesting concept. Yep. Al dente. All right. First, I'm going to reserve one cup of the pasta cooking water. Now, this is really nice and starchy at this point, so it's going to help to adjust the consistency of the ragu. Turn off the heat here, and I'm going to go drain the pasta. All right, so this recipe makes six cups, which is enough for two pounds of pasta. But I only made one pound, so I'm going to take three cups of this. I'm just going to add this to the cooked pasta. And as you can see, I'm going to need some of that pasta cooking water, so I'm going to add a half a cup at this point. A very thick and hearty sauce. Yes. And just give this a nice stir. This is looking great. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Will work for pasta. <laughs> yeah. The best things are sprinkled with a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and then I'm going to drizzle with a little bit more of extra virgin olive oil just for a little bit more richness. Mm. Oh, this is beautiful. Mm. All right. Mmm. I think you snuck another sauce in here. I didn't. No, I think you did, because there's no way that this was made in such a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. And the fresh fennel makes all the difference. And all that tomato paste mm -hmm. and all that garlic. Mm -hmm. And it tastes slow simmering. For a classic sausage ragu in less time, Start by breaking up sweet Italian sausage in a food processor. Then saute fennel with some aromatics, and then simmer the mixture in red wine before tossing it all with long, flat noodles like pepperdell. And that catches all of that delicious sausage. So there you have it. From Cook's Country, a weeknight version of your Italian grandmother's speciality, pasta with sausage ragu. Grazie, Bridget. <laughs> Va bene. <laughs> Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>